after two straight wins to open the doubles tournament of champions, Mike Morgan and Paul St. Pierre were in a tight battle last week with Joe Ashline and Steve Vadney. Until the end of game two, that was when Vadney took advantage of an opening. Good chance, oh, yes. Bart. He's got it. You could hear Joe Ashline yelling double as soon as he let it go, and that was a great-looking ball there on the Brooklyn side. Morgan and St. Pierre put on a charge at the end, but it was not enough. So it's Ashline and Vadney who move on. And today, they'll face Mike Morrill and Jack Quinn in the semifinals. This is week four of the Tri-State Megabucks Doubles Tournament of Champions. WNDS Sports and Tri-State Megabucks present Stars and Strikes Doubles. Stars and Strikes Doubles is sponsored in part by Somerville Lumber. Stars and Strikes Doubles is produced in conjunction with the New Hampshire Candlepin Bowling Association. And now your host, Doug Brown and Dan Murphy. Hi, everybody, and welcome again to Park Place Lanes here in Wyndham, New Hampshire, as we continue semifinal week. Now for the Stars and Strikes Doubles tournament of champions we're down to three teams uh, two of them today one of which will move on to face our number one seeded team next week and uh, we're down to three uh, pretty quality teams right now that's right we get this close these bowlers are thinking of the match today but they're also in the back of their mind they know they get a shot at uh, the championship round all right let's meet our uh, two teams for this semifinal match first of all going for their second win in a row after a 381 last week from Nashua New Hampshire Joe Ashline and his partner from Claremont New Hampshire Steve Vadney and Joe comes in averaging 128, has a high triple of 498. And Steve Adney comes in averaging also 128, his high triple 488. And, of course, as we mentioned last week, they were able to, uh, from that number three spot, knock off a very hot team, Mike Morgan and Paul St. Pierre, who themselves had won two matches in a row. And so now Joe and Steve will try and make it two in a row. And in order to do that, they'll have to beat our number two-seeded team from Framingham, Mass., Mike Morrill, and his partner from Fremont, New Hampshire, Jack Quinn. Okay, Mike comes in averaging 124, has a high triple of 475. Jackie Quinn comes in at averaging 125 and 479 for his individual high triple. The uh, runner-up team from this show will take home $400. That's third place prize money. The winners, of course, will move on to take on Gary Carrington and Jack Ray in the championship round next Sunday. We'll tell you more about that as the show goes along, but we're going to take a break and come right back with the first of three strings. Doubles bowling here on Stars and Strikes Doubles as we move on to the semifinals of the Tournament of Champions, and we'll start it right after these words. Don't go away. As it turns out, the top three teams in our Tournament of Champions doubles ladder, Joe Ashline and Steve Vadney with their win last week, knocking off Mike Morgan and Paul St. Pierre, who were threatening to make a run up from the bottom of the tournament. But instead, it'll be Joe Ashline and Steve Vadney trying to make it two in a row as they face now Mike Morrill and Jack Quinn. The winners of this match move into the championship. You see Gary Carrington and Jack Ray just waiting for the chance to uh, go against the winners of this match. So here we go. Semi-final week. Of course, if you missed it earlier, Mike Morgan has already moved into the finals of the singles tournament of champions. He made it three wins in a row today, beating Dave Richards in the semifinals. So now he'll move on to face the number one seed, Paul Berger, next week. Steve Vadney starts with a spare. Triangle on the right-hand corner. Six, nine, ten. And a half Worcester on the fill. He's right back, and though. The spare. Yes. <laughs> well, he only got two on the fill, but he makes it two marks in a row. Well, at that rate, he'll have 120 at the end of the game. <laughs> <laughs> there goes the five, and then finally the seven. Great recovery by Steve Vadney. Now Mike Moore. <laughs> Wants it to come this way and well, just missed knocking the three pin down. Mike Morrill and Jack Quinn qualified for the show back in November. When they beat Tom O'Brien and Glenn LeBlanc, Mike and Jack threw a 4-12 in that match. And Mike starts off with a spare in the first. <laughs> back in the pocket, drop of eight. Five and the eight pins left. Trying to make it two in a row for Mike Morrill and Jack Quinn. And 
can see Mike directing traffic, trying to get that Woodson move farther to the right to give, give him a clear shot at the five pin. But he's not going to have a clear shot. No, nope. couldn't get at the five pin. And a 10. 28. The first two for Morrill and Quinn. And now Joe Ashline. Joe and Steve decided to uh, switch the order for uh, not only the third game last week, but also to start off this week. Last week, uh, Joe began the match. This time it was Steve. And he'll start with a triangle. This time the opposite corner. Four, seven, eight. It is a seven pin drop on the spare though. And an unusual total uh, now for Ashline and Vadne, 29 through two with two marks. Ooh, just missed the four pin. Ten box for Joe. As they do throughout the year, but most notably at this time of the year when we move into the Tournament of Champions, all the action here on the wins brought to you by Tri-State Megabucks. Just imagine being rich. Tri-State Megabucks, the presenting sponsor for Candlepin Stars and Strikes and Stars and Strikes Doubles. Joe trying to work himself out of a half Worcester first ball. And he'll take an eight. And he moved a piece of wood into the other lane. <laughs> That's two weeks in a row he's done that. 47 through, and through four. And now our first look at Jackie Quinn. First look this week anyways. Jack from Fremont, New Hampshire. And his wife Cheryl have uh, two children, 10-year-old Joni and 8-year-old Nathan, both of whom are here. What a smooth delivery. Don't even hear his ball hit the lane. It's right on that spare. Fair in the third. Now, in case you missed uh, last week's show, we talked about the uh, qualifying scores earlier, and you saw the list of all the bowlers who made it to the doubles tournament of champions. But for those of you who missed it last week, uh, there was a tie for second place in qualifying. Jack Quinn and Mike Morrill rolled a 4-12 back in November when they won their series. And several weeks ago, Steve Vadney and Joe Ashline rolled a 4-12 when they won their series. So before last week's show, we had a one-string roll-off. Jack just misses the spare on the seven pin. We had a one-string roll-off to determine second and third place. And uh, Morrill and Quinn won that roll-off 134 to 116. And to give a word of credit to Jack Quinn in that roll-off because his first ball, the first time he went up there, we'll take another look at that spare try first. Boy, the head pin danced in front of the just, seven. Just missed it. It's a nine in the box. The ball dipped into the channel, and let's see, it'll be a nine drop for Steve Adnan. Four pin with all kinds of help in, in front of it. Started to talk about Jack Quinn. Uh, the first ball that he rolled in that roll up, he came up in the third box. Working on a spare left by Mike Morrill and he lobbed. So they took a, a zero fill on the spare, but he recovered from that to pour in three more marks of his own through the rest of the string and that helped the team to the victory as Steve Vadney powers a strike on top of that spare. Well, he's pulled four boxes and he's had marks in every single one of them. Two spares to start off the match and now a spare strike. <laughs> Someone just yelled to Steve Vadney, is your partner getting heavy? <laughs> <laughs> The spare, no. <laughs> and a nine box, so the lead switches back to Ashline and Vadney by five, and they have a strike up in the six. Tomorrow will try and answer that call. And he does. 
does, matching it. It's dead in the pocket, just tripping that four pin. Perfect strike. Now Joe Ashline will fill the strike put up by his partner. No, he'll have the eight and the ten, but the wood may be playable here. Yep, he's going to try to carry him the ball off the pin for the eight pin and have the wood take the ten. No, oh. got too much of the wood. Next week, championship week here on Stars and Strikes, Tournament of Champions, finals. At noon, it'll be Paul Berger against Mike Morgan. That close to a strike for Joe Ashline. And then next week at 1 o'clock, it'll be the winners of this match against Gary Carrington and Jack Ray for the doubles title. Spare it up for Joe Ashline. His first mark of the match in the eighth frame sets up his partner for the final two. Now, yeah. <laughs> Working on that strike. Missing the head pin, but it could have been worse. And this is on a strike, remember, so you can take advantage with the big fill here. Yes. Pushes it over into the corner. Spare on strike. You see just a domino effect. Everything moving to right to left. Four horsemen and then the eight pin. Well, that was a lob. He got that one out there too. No, oh, he'll have to reset. He'll lose the seven on the fill. talked about that that happened in the uh, one string roll off as well but he bounced back from that Jack does most of his bowling at the Lafayette lanes which is where he works and let's see not gonna steal one six box There working for Steve Vadney. Spare it up. Five, six, seven. Right, Not as easy as it sounds, though. I play the wood in front of the six and try to catch that in the five pin. Good try. This for a 140? No, it'll be a nine. Take another look at the spare attempt. Oh, just. <laughs> Jumped it in front of the seven. Wasn't enough to carry it, though. 139 for Ashline and Vadney. Game one. Mike Morrill. Coming back. <laughs> now it's just the one eight. Instead, it was there before. It was the four horsemen plus the eight. have to come on flush on the head pin, although that wood to the left may help. Nope, I would have, but he had to catch the head pin. So they'll drop at least another seven to their opponents. It's a 22 pin advantage now. 
about a mark here. Tighten it up. Solid nine drop. Just the seven pin left. Mike throws left, uh, right to left, almost cross lane. That was Spare very close, but he got it. And the fill will be eight. 126 for Morrill and Quinn. They trail by 13 after one. We'll be back with game two, semifinals of the Stars and Strikes Doubles Tournament of Champions in a minute. Jack Quinn will start the middle game. Hey Jack, you're right on it. This 10 pin go. Oh. It's rocking. Got it for the spare. No doubt about that one. Mark number six for the team. Each team was six now. Usually a tough pin for the right hander, but. Jack made it look easy. Yeah. And coming, coming back. Almost for the well, strike. Watch out. There it is. Oh. <laughs> it's not going to go. <laughs> you always do have to wait, though. The head pin remains. Still rocking. <laughs> You won't have to hit it very hard to knock it over. <laughs> Two in a row for Jackie Quinn. Joe Ashline. Big first ball. That will be a strike. No way the five pin would stay up. See him hitting the one two and just the five pin. Actually, that would behind the five pin roll out just in time. Otherwise, I think it would have slowed that piece that finally knocked it over down. Now looking for the double. That looks pretty good. Oh, yes, he's got a double strike for Joe Ashline to start game two. It's a matter of whether the four pin was going to go over or not. Kick that other piece of wood, and finally the four goes down for the two strikes. Well, going to have one of his own. It's a nine pin drop, but watch the wood. Tough to tell if that other piece on the right is frozen or not. Well, oh, that one that is. Helps. So you be able to get it either side. Yep, takes it out. Three marks in a row for the team. And three nine pin drops. <laughs> Good, just some easily bent strikes. Yeah, it's up a little bit that. short, yep. That'll be a seven. One, two, ten. Trying to make it four in a row. Keep a little bit of heat on. Steve Vadney is gonna get up working on a double strike. a nice situation to have. Step up to the line and work on your partner's double strike. The key, as always, on a double strike, the first ball. Absolutely. Always this one to, counts three times. I always try to talk myself into the head pin anyway, so I'm going to get a spread eagle, so be it, but I want to hit the head pin. Misses it. Well, you know, sometimes you don't have to. <laughs> 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 now, see, if he did hit the head pin, he would have another strike, because that's the only one he left standing. <laughs> oh, slides it by. 
you know i i was about to say sometimes this is the most difficult spare leave because you know this is a huge break by missing the head pin and leaving nothing but the head pin standing you keep saying to yourself well i can't miss possibly miss this for a break and put a little more pressure on yourself And there, that time he hits the head pin and he gets the split. So you can't win either way. Everything but the three. So after all that marking in the first few boxes, the double strike on one side, the triple spare on the other side, only three pins have been added to the lead. The lead is 16 as we pause at about the halfway point. Semi-final week, doubles tournament of champions continues next. Here are the winning numbers from last night's Tri-State Megabucks drawing. up on lane 32. Four horsemen right with wood plus the seven pin. What usually happens is you clear out the four horsemen and the seven pin stays. And that was called as a lob. So Jack will lose four. So that'll be a five box. One, three, and nine bins. And they're all rocking. Bears it up. Just flushing the head pin. Of course, he's got all the wood in between and helped him with the three and the nine. And Joe Ashline up with the fifth and sixth frames. All right, Joe, start him up. Too heavy on the head pin, leaves the 610. It's going to increase the lead a little bit, anyways, until Mike Morrill fills this spare. 27. Seven on the spare. Just missing. A little too far to the left. The Stars and Strikes Doubles Tournament of Champions brought to you in part by the folks at Somerville Lumber. Or you can get it right the first time. Somerville Lumber. Out the three, the five, and the ten. Doesn't look like he's going to have any help. Looks like 
looks pretty good, though. Oh, Great nice shot. shot. Got a good angle, a good view behind Mike Morrill on that shot. That ball was just broke right back, split the three and the five, and finally the 10 goes. Steve Vadney now. Right in the pocket for a strike. Kind of an unusual looking strike, but it was a good first ball. Kind of, kind of all collapsed at once towards the end. Right here. <laughs> Off target that time. And he'll end up with the high low jack. All right, it's a money shot. And Steve, as you saw, turned away immediately. He knew he had missed it. So an eight fill on the strike, and there's a nine box, 121 through eight. Ashline and Vadney had a 139 opening game. And working on a pretty good game here as well. Jack Quinn now coming up to fill a mark left by Mike Morrill. Final two frames, game number two. Trailing by 27. You can cut into that uh, with this ball. Two, four, and six. Nope. And again. So that's 122 with one box remaining. Oh, my. One in the five. Well, Marlon and Quinn will have a pretty good total after two. Two fifty seven but it just won't be enough to have the lead after two games. Already Ashline and Vadney at 260. Plus whatever Joe Ashline can put up in these final two boxes. And Joe goes through the middle, trying to have that <laughs> six pin fall forward, but he stomped on the lane, even that didn't work. I've tried that for years. <laughs> it just doesn't <laughs> seem to work. Get everything come off oh, the wall. Oh, <laughs> gave it a scare. Leaves the two pin. Ten. Lead right now at 22. And of course, if Joe is able to put up more than nine in this 10th frame, he'll increase it. Three. <laughs> He's waited nine. <laughs> Boy, he hit the head pin twice. <laughs> these two boxes and got two horrendous leaves. And it's nine, so 140. And a two string total, 279. So the difference is 22. For Ashline and Vadney, they are in the lead, but still one game to go to see who will go to the finals next week. We'll be back. All right, 22 pin advantage. That's what they're trying to protect. Going to next week's championship match. Steve Vadney. Chops out three. And 
one more. <laughs> And two more. Wow. Be out. Open it up. Comes right back with an eight drop. Shoot at the six nine with wood. But the second piece rolling in there could help him. The first piece, uh, if he's got the angle, will get that uh, nine pin, but. Yeah. The second piece kind of kept everything together. Otherwise, it would have been a much more difficult shot. Spare in a second. for Mike Morrow. Mike Morrow goes over to lane 31. Drop of eight. Three in the six pins for a spare. Well, he's got to put, start putting some offense up. And he covers those two for his mark. Matches the mark up already in the second box. Phil on the mark, left by Steve Vadney. Joe may want to think about not hitting the head pin. Maybe. He sees these other fellows missing the head pin and leaving just the head pin standing. He's <laughs> all over the head pin. He's got nothing but slits. Thirty-one through three. Joe gets to work over on lane 31. Big nine drop. Oh, that wood was coming across too. Well, let's see what happens. Well, you can see this 10 pin now, but that wood is awful tempting. But don't forget there's two pieces of wood behind it. Yes. Drives it out of there. Chance for him to really punish those pins when well, something's laying across the lane like that. Using the power to his advantage on that one. Certainly did. Jackie Quinn filling the spare in the second. Opposite of open frame, so it's a big box. Well, decent seven pin drop, but not a real good spare leave. The five, the nine, and the 10. Piece of wood out in front. Tough one. Yeah, if he went any farther right where he could get the ball to carry him off of the 10 pin, probably would have left the 9 pin. Well, we reduced, reduced the lead to 17. Got to match the mark now in the fourth, though. Have a shot at it. The two and the four. Got it. Each team with a mark up in the fourth. This thing is getting a little tighter. Just 17 pins the difference. We'll be back to decide a winner in a minute. Steve Vadney is going to be working on a mark, as will Mike Morrow when he comes up. Yeah. 
Neither team really able to take control of this match, it seems. It's just the five fill on the spare, four horsemen and the nine pin, four horsemen left, that is. And just a six box, so only 21 pins in those two frames. 52 half, so a little bit of up an opening for the team of Morrill and Quinn. Well, let's see this wood settles down. And he's gonna go straight back with it, but he needs some help from the ball on the five pin. Nope. Two openings for Mike Morrill to work on, and we come up working on a spare. Well, things could get very tight here in a hurry. A decent fill and another mark or two. Be virtually even. Seven. The drop. Well, that wood is pushing forward. I don't know if it's forward enough to help him make That's the shot. Got to be thinking three six. Ooh. Oof. And there's a situation where if you, if you do anything, hit the three pin. If you miss the three, chances are diminished considerably of making that spare. And that's a nine. Picks up three more in count opposite the six box, so the lead is now down to 12. And still working on an open frame, just a nine box. Yeah, Mark here would look pretty big. Yeah. Won't be easy though. One, four, seven, nine. Ooh, give it a good run. Now let's keep it at 12. We gotta knock down one of these two pins. Well, it'll go to 13. Not much to choose between these two teams right now. 13 pin difference, 12 marks for each team. The, the real glaring difference right now, the double strike in that uh, second game for Joe Ashline, but even that was pretty much negated by marks on the other side. And a strike for Joe Ashline. Speaking of strikes. That's the fifth strike for the team. Four horsemen left. With some help, between the four and the seven is a piece of wood. That definitely help the four pins go if he can have the head pin. Well, he had the head pin, but too full. Seven on the strike. Ten. So Joe Ashline is through for the day. And now Jack Quinn for his final two. One, two, and ten. With no playable wood. Oh, oh let's see. No. Will it get there? No. Now it's going to push the lead up to around 20. You really have to put a mark up for his partner, Mike Morrill. Important box right here. The eighth frame. Final game. Down by 20. Almost have to put a mark up because he's going to need a couple more. That's assuming Steve Vadney doesn't get any the rest of the way in his ninth and tenth. Oh boy, it's not going to be an easy one. It's going to give it a run. Oh, mm. Great effort. One 
Wow. Looked like a pretty good hit. He's left with the seven and the nine. A couple pieces of wood, though. Let's... That one comes back and settles right down. Well, it didn't come back quite far enough. It's going to have to play the one right in front of the eight pin, a nine pin, I should say, and snap it off the wall. Yeah, he went oh, between. Oh, I didn't think he could get it there. I thought it was too far back. It's a nice shot. I thought it rolled back too far. But what do I know? <laughs> <laughs> We're back too far. We couldn't tell. That's right. <laughs> it's my eyesight. <laughs> Just catching the head pin for a seven fill. Mike Morrill's already going to need strikes. This one is, that one's really going to hurt. One oh five through nine, one fifteen in the tenth. Chance for a spell. Chance for a four hundred triple here with a six or more on this spare. There it is. A seven fill, a 122, and a 401 for Joe Ashline and Steve Vadney. That means Morrill and Quinn need 144 to tie. That's a bundle of strikes. And no, I don't know. Does Mike get credit for what happened over on lane 31? I would say so. <laughs> I got to give him a strike. <laughs> he knocked down nine on the lane he was bowling on, and five more in the other lane that and lob. that was a lob so that spare is taken away that'll be a nine box and it wouldn't have mattered even had he made the spare and put three strikes on top of it it would not have made any difference so mike will have to uh, reset over on lane 31. <laughs> Joe Ashline and Steve Vadney will move into the finals next week. <laughs> Spare in the 10th. And the half Worcester, a 110, a 367 for Morrill and Quinn. Ashline and Vadney advance to the finals of the Stars and Strikes Doubles Tournament of Champions, and we'll be back in a minute. Share their $400 prize money, the third place checks. Uh, you guys uh, were able to uh, get, you had a couple of marks there, a couple of stretches there where you were able to put some marks together, but uh, these guys are pretty tough today. Yeah, they, they bowl very well. You know, we get close, and Joe threw a strike there and you know, put it back up to 20 pins, and that was it. We hope that uh, even though it's uh, off for the summer now that we'll see you both uh, again sometime in the fall, we appreciate you being here. Well, you have to bowl in a roll off for us to win them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we do still have that rule, don't we? <laughs> well, we hope to see you back both again real soon. Very nice show, yeah. All right. Good. Thanks very much, Mike and Jack. We appreciate it. Thanks a lot. Third place finish for uh, Mike Morrill and Jack Quinn. Gracious in defeat, and Joe Ashline and Steve Vadney will come on up, and Joe will bring uh, his, his customary uh, friends with him. Congratulations, and uh, congratulations to you, Steve. It was, it was kind of a funny uh, uh, 400. It was almost like a quiet 400, really. Yeah, we didn't throw any real big strings. We just were pretty consistent, and uh, we threw a few bad boxes in there to keep the scores down. <laughs> <laughs> just, to, just to keep it interesting, right, Steve? <laughs> well, I think the team worked, uh, out of the three weeks we, we've been together now, the uh, team worked real well this match, I thought. Yeah, I, I think you're right. Uh, it seems like when, when somebody needs to come up with a mark, you do. And, uh, of course, the next guy that wants to come up with a mark is Derek. He's ready He's ready to go. Uh, he's already going. <laughs> he knows, he's, he's, he's starting without us. He knows Jack and, uh, and Gary are going to be up here warming up soon, so he's yeah. got to get him out of the way. That's right. Next week uh, in the championship match, Gary Carrington and Jack Ray, uh, you, you've heard of those guys, I assume. 
Yeah. Well, do they bowl this game much? <laughs> <laughs> We're looking forward to it. We'll see you next week. Hey, thank you. All right, that's Joe Ashline and Steve Vadney. Derek is over on the lanes. We'll get a look at him in a minute, I'm sure. But uh, first, we're going to take a look at the ladder and uh, set you up for next week. First of all, at 12 noon, it'll be our final week of the season. At 12 noon, the championship match of the singles tournament of champions will be Mike Morgan looking for his fourth straight win. He'll go against number one seed Paul Berger. And in the championship match here on the doubles tournament of champions, it'll be Joe Ashline and Steve Vadney trying to make it three wins in a row on their own as they go after number one seed uh, Gary Carrington and Jack Ray. Well, uh, I wouldn't put it past them, but they got a tough team in Jackie Ray and Gary Carrington, so it matches up uh, pretty well and should be an exciting match. I know we hate to say this, but uh, 400 maybe a safe bet needed to win next week? I would go out on the limb and say about 415 you're going to need. So. Uh, is that right? Wow. Okay, well, we're looking forward to it. We'll find Everybody will forget the pred prediction by next week anyway, so we'll see you next Sunday at 12 noon here on the wins for the championship matches of both Tri-State Megabucks Tournament of Champions Finals. Until then, for Dan Murphy and the whole crew, Doug Brown, so long from Park Place Lanes.